So here is a thing that I realized. Hello world. I did not finish going through my checklist. Over here? Nope. I don't know where it went. Here. It's one of the ones without a... Uh, there it is. Yep. Oh, need to open stream notes. I was not set up for this one. Uh, here we go. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't finish the checklist. Um, build a browser archive tool. Sub so Keeper Maestro. I may do these in a different order. And set up FFmpeg. So here's what we're going to do. Um, oh, I didn't run. Yeah, I really didn't do it. Okay, so let me go through the rest of the checklist, then I'll hit the button. Uh, open stream nodes, close all browser tabs. We'll get to that later. Turn on the lights. Make sure the camera's set up for that. Close those. Uh, Chatbot, I think, is going. I'm going to test. New GIF. There we go. Hey, it's the brain. Whatever, we'll leave that, that's cool. Uh, turn on fan, definitely wanna do that. Make sure the mic is set up in front of my face, make pit stop, to Twitter, start music. Okay, so I wasn't that, that, that far off. I just didn't open stream yet, so I bounce there. I'll be right back. There we go, that's probably better. Where is that? Is that the edge of the table? Or is that just light? I think that's just light. I updated my keyboard cam. Yeah, I think it's a shadow. Yeah, it's a shadow. Okay, whatever. I want to make sure you're not like seeing the floor because that would be distracting. Um, boy, it's right up on there though. Oh, you may be seeing the floor. Okay, but it blends in. You can't tell. That's fine. So the one to like stick out. Um, okay, cool. So yeah, so what are we gonna do? So actually, the first thing we're gonna do is uh, actually the first thing we're gonna do. So this is my launch pad that comes up now, and I'm working on a new launch pad, which sitting here that's powered by Django. And I've got a couple things up here that I like: um, closed loop tabs, uh, run post stream macro, and run stream prep. We're gonna hit run stream prep in a second, but what we're going to do is actually put that on the existing uh, index page. That's the first thing. There we go. Uh, and now we make a new tab. We should see run stream prep. Okay, and so I think everything's gonna be fine. We'll just see. Yeah, it should should work, right? Because the whole point of this is to do this. Um, run stream prep. Oh, I just had an idea. So there's run stream prep. And so now all it's doing is setting up um, all my window sizes and get everything lined up. And uh... oh, why is it trying to close text wrangler? That's bad. Oh yeah, I didn't look at it. Uh, I didn't do this one either. Throw out the trash. Uh, those are all fine for now. Uh, let's actually archive those videos for assembly. That's what we're gonna use for the FFmpeg thing. Those are all free videos that I got from a website. Uh, on open Scratchpad. I need to see if I can figure out how to automatically open that. Yeah, so that screen prep thing is the thing that I run that just gets me up and running for all my stream stuff. Uh, moving windows where it lets me check stuff, gets windows set up, updates font sizes. Um, and generally makes stuff easier. So I don't want to hit it again. 
Oh, I need to go to localhost because my stream notes should be here, and I can update them again or bring them back up. See, the font's bigger. Um, yeah, so quickly what we're going to do is show a problem that I think I've seen with Keyboard Maestro where if you're trying to access a menu item by path, it doesn't work quite right. Um, we're going to build a little browser tool or build a tool in Keyboard Maestro actually that does a clean sweep of all the browser tabs that I have open and just zips them into an archive so that later I can go pull them back out. And the idea is like, I just, I want to clear the slate, but I don't want to lose all the stuff that I have open. Um, and so we can just go fire that through and do it that way. Um, I can close that text wrangler note. Yeah, I think it did everything right. Some, I'm still working a little bit up to refine that thing, but it's pretty good. Um, and the keyboard maestro, I may do this on the stream, I may not, but it's to whitelist app. So basically in that process, I explicitly close um, a bunch of applications. So run stream prep, prep pie charm, close non-stream apps. So this, I just go through and explicitly close some stuff, but really what I wanna do is flip that. So that's kind of blacklisting and closing apps, but like there may be other apps that are open and I, so this is just like to get the, the state of the machine like ready to go for a thing. So what I should really want to do is close any app that's not one of my explicit stream apps. That way I don't have some random app sitting there popping up being a distraction. I don't know. Um, so I may do that, we may not. Um, then last but not least, I'm going to try and do some FFmpeg stuff. Uh, I've got... Uh, I'm working on some YouTube stuff and I want to put some videos out there, but they need to be uh, clear of copyright. So I've got those copyright free videos and I have some YouTube copyright free audio. And what I want to do is assemble the videos and like take little sections of several of them and that to make, to match the length of a given song and then stitch the videos together to make a song, to make a video the length of the song and output it basically. Um, and so I did a little kicking around and I didn't quite find how to do that. So we'll dig into that. And that may be one of those things that it, either somebody's already done it and I just need to copy some commands or it's going to take some digging into. Um, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, yeah, I don't know. This is all right with the new keyboard set up, right? You can see the hands a little better. Though you can see the chair, I think, right there a little bit. That's a little distracting. All right, we're going to fix that real quick. Actually, can I fix that with the camera? Well, that was easy. Ah, it's still there just barely, but whatever. Close enough. Eventually, I need to get something that raises the camera up a little bit and moves it more directly over the uh, the keyboard, but that's for another time. Um, oh, you can see the fan spinning in there too. Hopefully that's not too distracting. That may be distracting. All right. New setup. We'll see how this goes. So transform it. Which is the bottom. Let's try 160. That cuts out the fan noise. Ah, fan noise, oops. Crap, I hate it when I do that. It is so very easy to grab the wrong thing in OBS. something. That's close enough. Oh, I could probably crop it, right? If I crop it, will that fix it? This is boring stream, I know. 
So if that's right, it's really left because it's updated, because it's whatever. Doesn't appear to do anything. All right, whatever, it's fine. Uh, so first things first, keyboard maestro. Uh, and actually, we're going to go to full screen here for a second. So sorry if the fonts get small. Um, to bring up keyboard maestro. So menu. Possible bug. All right. New action. Select a show menu item. Um, now I need to figure out what we're gonna do that makes it show up. Um, here, let's do this. So we're gonna have a sublime text window over here that we're gonna try and close. Oh, it needs to be in an if state. <coughs> Excuse me, it needs to be in an if statement. Um, let's see if this works first. So sublime text, menu, sublime text, file, uh, close window. All right, if we try that, oh yeah, 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 because that's not going off the path. It's the if statement, that's right, okay. Bear with me. Id, how about if? Nope, how about if, come here. Um, oh, and actually we don't need that. We can just do display text. It worked. Display text in window. So that's it by itself. It works. So here is where it goes a little sideways, I think. So menu condition, path, I forget where you tell it the application. Oh yeah, so you gotta tell it the application up here. Oh, it's right there on top. So we're gonna select sublime text. or open it, and then we're gonna go to file, close window. So file close window is enabled off of this path, which it is, file, close window. We should see the it worked. So we're gonna run this whole thing. It worked. Now, Keyboard Maestro. I'm going to redo this again here in just a second with a little bit faster. Keyboard Maestro menu condition. All right, so that, okay, so here's, here's the real report. So if we active, so we've got a sublime text window up here with uh, a conditional for file close window via the path. And if it's enabled, it shoots it worked. And so there's file and close window. So if we if we run the whole macro, it worked. Got it. Now, according to the documentation, we can use these separators, right, for a menu condition. But if I copy this one and paste it and hit run, didn't work. Here, let's do this. Oops. There. Fail. Pass. All right. So that's a fail. And the only thing I'm changing, right, is the, and I'll, I'll go through them all. Fail. Fail. 
fail. Oh, pass. That one worked. Okay. And going back, just to make sure I didn't do anything silly, right? Fail. So a couple of them fail. A couple of them work. So just FYI, I don't know what's going on there. Um, and it's like, to me, like if you're copying and pasting out of it, it should, should work. Uh, maybe there's something else going on there, but that one works. And then this one works. But the other two appear to not. So a little bug report. I think it's a bug. Seems like a bug. Uh, so there you go. Thanks, Keyboard Maestro. I'm actually really digging the app. Uh, the the way I keep comparing it is like Photoshop, or when you first look at it, it doesn't look like it's much, but it's like infinitely deep. So digging it. Uh, you can look at a past few streams, and I'm going to post some stuff about it too, because it's really it's super impressing me. So thanks. But with I think we might have a bug. Uh, but whatever. It's a very complicated app. All good. So thank you. Uh, cool. So moving on. Oh, I should have timestamped that. Uh, what's my timestamp thing? I have a keyboard maestro app for that. Crunch shift end. That was way too late for that. Oh, I guess it's kind of the start and I can just go find it, whatever. Um, so the thing that goes there is when I'm doing stuff on stream and I want it like a mark point that I can go back and review so I can make notes about it or whatever, I, I can hit that, it automatically um, just updates this file with a timestamp so I can go back and go look and see what was happening at that point and then write the notes up. So that's that. Um, okay, cool. So that's that. So done. Oh, I guess I should do that just to make it easier to see. Or I could put these in Django eventually. Um, build a browser sweep tool that saves all the archive tabs without filtering. Okay, so what I've got right now is um, these pages on my site that list all of the pages that I went to on a specific day. And the way that works is I've got a launch D script, which is basically like cron, something that just tells a, tells something to happen every five minutes that triggers a Python script. And that Python script triggers a Apple script, which looks at Safari, goes through all the windows and all the tabs, sucks all this out, passes them back to Python. Python makes that page. Um, and it continually updates it throughout the day. One of the things I've got another, it also makes another version that's only what's currently open, uh, which is what I use for the stream notes because I do the same thing for stream notes. Um, the stream notes are a subset of the stuff that's in um, that's in the full uh, the full list. So here's stream notes, and there's a lot of crossover because I most of the stuff I did yesterday was on stream. Um, but what I want, it's but so when I start a stream, I don't want any tabs open. So what I have been doing is going through and kind of closing all the tabs and like looking at them, seeing if I wanted to bookmark them, trying to throw them some other places. Like you can see here, I was messing around with the NASA API last night and I've got a whole bunch of API tabs open. I don't really want to lose those, but I don't want to have to deal with them either. So what I'm going to do is make a, a new thing, very much like the, the existing one, that just grabs all of the open tabs, throws them into a file somewhere, and closes all the windows. So I can just start with a clean slate. And then another macro, and I'm going to do this in Keyboard Maestro. Well, so Keyboard Maestro will be the hotkey that triggers the, the action that makes this happen. Um, I think maybe I should do, no, I think I'm going to keyboard my store Django. I'm not sure which one. Cause I may like, you know, I've got these, I've got these links now that I can fire. And so I think maybe I'll do a clean sweep there. Um, though it's interesting. Would that eat itself? No, it shouldn't. Cause it's just going to fire off the external process and then it'll go. So I, I'll worry about that part when I get there about, about the triggering. The first thing is just to set up the thing that does the thing. Um, I don't know why that's down there. October 18th, that was like a week ago. Uh, so that's that's the path we're on. Um, so I'm gonna make a new thing for this. 
Also, I'm going to switch back to our regular view so that hopefully the font sizes are big enough that you can see OK. Uh, we're going to go to this way, because that way I can find it. Um, tiny font, big font. Uh, oh, still tiny. See, I haven't updated this one yet. I don't know if I can update this one automatically to automatically switch the size of the fonts. Uh, so we're gonna go to git, git init bear browser clean sweep. Okay, go into dev. Git clone, git repos, browser, browser, clean sweep. Browser, clean sweep. Uh, git ignore, good grabber, git ignore. I meant. Nope. Uh, we're gonna do that though, real quick. Text expander. Python and Django. That's fine. Git. I don't have one for that. Okay, so we're gonna make a new action real quick. New, new thing, which is just gonna be our git ignore. So this way we don't have to do this. Gi semicolon. There we go. That's nicer. Uh, touch readme. Uh, actually, we can just go straight into this directory. Oh, actually, we're going to do this in PyCharm. So, PyCharm project open. Why does this look different? I don't know. Dev browser clean sweep go. New window. Why didn't it do the new project thing for me? I thought something was different. Oh, new project. <laughs> and then you tell it the directory. Sorry, I was all confused. Browser clean sweep. Okay. Virtual environment, Python 3. Oh, that looks good. Do it. Create from existing source. New window. Wait. Yeah, one of the bummers, and I may need, I could probably fix this with just more powerful lights, but I can't have my window open or the blinds up because the it throws the light off pretty bad. But if I made it brighter over here, I could do that. It would be nice to have the window open. And also open because at some point here, the temperature will get nicer, or nice enough to actually, you know, be nice. Uh, read me. There we go. Browser clean sweep. It's probably a hotkey for that. Um, closes all ar archives and closes all open tabs. Function one, function two, function. I wonder what the etymology of the word function is. We could look that up. Um, restores all closed tabs. Did 
There's probably a tool out there that does this, but this is going to be my version. We're going to look, though. Safari, save all tabs. I know you can create a bookmark for tabs. But that's not what I'm looking for. I want like a stash, basically. Uh, so cool, whatever. Um, we're gonna also open Control O do there? Or is that do another? Whoa. Oh, Control O isn't open. Interesting. But I feel like something's different there too. New project. Oh, open recent. Okay. Well, let's try it this way. Open. Oh, I still need to put dev in there. Here, we're gonna do that right now. Somebody did something funny, was trying to do something funny and did CD and sent it to, made a folder of it instead of actually CD'd into a directory. All right, open dev page archiver, new window. One of these times I should put it in the same window. Too. Oh, I'll bet it. Actually, hang on a second. I wanna see what that does. Oops, that still didn't work. Got to go to the menu on that. Uh, dev, page archiver, open this window. Did it eat it? It ate it. Oh, okay. Don't do that. Dev browser clean sweep. New window. That's a weird default. Uh, so, all right. So we're going to do this. I'm going to try and do this test with tests, which is going to take longer, but I need to practice. Sweep up tabs, pi. User bin, environment, Python 3, import unit test. If name equals main, unit test main. Is that what you run? Yep, test. Okay, cool. Still, oh, we're gonna fix that at some point, making that green instead of red when it's green. Um, so class pi unit test. So test, class under test, and then the name of the class would be class under test, right? Color tests. I guess it does, the name of it doesn't matter as long as you unit, as long as you make the test case that. Um, hey, got a new GIF. Hey, the bot's working. Always nice. So class is gonna be, uh, hello. Liam, Lehman, Liam man. Hey, it's going great. How about yourself? Little uh, little lunchtime stream. Uh, had a little lunch. Now doing a little stream. So digging it. Trying a little Python. See if we can uh, close and archive all of those tabs uh, so that I can hit a button, close them, and save them. Hit another button and have them come back so I can get like a clean slate. So that's kind of where I'm trying to go. We'll see what happens. 
I mean, it's just code, right? We can make it happen. Uh, so sweep up files, or sweep up tabs, test. Also, you have to bear with me. Python is not my strongest suit, so. Lunch and coding. <sighs> Sounds like an album name. Like a blues album of some kind. Like a really weird blues album. But a good one, probably. I think it's a good album. Uh, Alright, so def. init. self. So we're going to call it sut, sweep up tabs, sweep up tabs, dot new. Is that what you do here? I don't have my init version. Where is, no, okay, so you just do this. As I said, I'm still getting used to Python uh, and programming. Uh, so we're gonna make sweep up tabs. This is gonna fail, right? Because we don't have anything there. Oh, it didn't fail. Why didn't that fail? Oh, because we didn't actually run any tests. So def test tone. So we'll just make sure that we're live. Here, let's do this first. Oops. Uh, self assert equal one one. So just make sure we're live. Yep, we're live. We got a test running. Make sure it fails. Failure works. Okay, good. So, and now if we do self assert one one, but we try and do this, we should fail because that doesn't exist. Oh. Takes one. Oh, wow. Just opened thing weird for me there. I don't really mean for that to happen. Uh, takes one positional argument, but two were given. Do not pass self to init. Oh, it's called setup. Aha! Got it. Let's try that. Now it's gonna break. Yep. Okay, cool. So, import. So, I kind of do this thing where I go step by step. I want to break things every step of the way just to kind of get my head around the direction of things uh, and see how things go. So, sweep up tabs. Break because it's not there. No problem. We'll fix that. New file. Sweep up tabs.py. Add it. Um, class. Sweep up tabs. Pass. And so now we should pass. Nope. Why don't we pass? Sweep up tabs is not defined. Why did that work? You need it this way? Yeah, you need to do it this way. Right. There we go, passing. Okay, so we're talking to it. Uh, now we gotta figure out how we're gonna test this, because it's like largely I'm testing. Like most of the functionality is stuff that I'm not going to test, like firing off the Apple script, firing off to the other thing, uh, the like saving. Like I don't need to test saving files because I trust that the Python test will catch that. Um, but let's try uh, directory test files. So I guess what I'm really looking for is the content of the file that I want to post, that I want to save. So def test output content. And these names may all change, right? This is just kind of using tests to feel my way around. Um, so uh, I've got a, oh, actually, wait, hang on. I've got this that helps. PT, semicolon, there we go. That just gets me set up for the a test really quick. A little test expander snippet. So test, output, content. 
And so we're just going to run this, make sure the test works, test works. So what am I expecting here for the output content? Um, I don't know the answer to that yet, but I do know that we're going to want to have um, actual coming from set output content. So this is going to fail because that doesn't exist. So now we're going to make that exist here. Let's do this so we can see what's going on here. Um, definite self self output content equals not a and so now it should pass nope it should not pass oh it's got to be string uh name sut is not defined oh you got to global it global I have no idea if this is like a best practice on this, but it seems to work. So now, test ran. Okay, cool. And so we're not, we're not actually using it yet, but now we're gonna use it and now it's gonna fail because we're not passing the right string back, right? Yep. And so now we're just gonna pass back string. All right, so we can pass stuff back. Got it. Um, What's the going to be, so I guess really what I want is JSON, right? It's just to save a bunch of JSON for this. So. Yeah, okay. So this is just, I can just make an array of JSON, right? So that's all I really need. So I don't need this. Uh, yeah, whatever. Probably don't want that in a minute. So what, yeah, so again, I'm trying to figure out what I need to test here. So like, all right, let's just try it. So. Def get URLs self. Oops. Pass. If name is main, sweep up tabs equals sweep up tabs, sweep up tabs run. So there's that, okay. And so now what I'm gonna do is go look at my other one. So I wanna run an Apple script, so I need an Apple script. So support, here's our git tab details Apple script. Tell Safari doc text to nothing. Window count, every window. Repeat for one to window count. Set tab counter to the window. All right, so let's just grab this. Go back here. Get Safari URLs dot Apple script. It's not helpful. Okay. File is not associated with any file type. Please just define the association. Uh, it's Apple script, which we're just going to call text. Right, fire, whoops. Yes, please. Remember, don't ask again. All right. So this time, what we're going to want to do is get the tab name, so we don't need the name. We're gonna get the URL as a string. Get tab URL and line feed. 
Wait. Set text to doc text. Oh, okay. So it's going to append to itself. Got it. And we don't need that. So there's the URL on the line feed is string. And we got it. Okay. So there's that. Plugin supporting Apple script files are found. Install plugins. Provide supports for writing, executing Apple scripts. Oh, wow. Okay. Wiki how to Apple script. Plugin provides support for writing and executing Apple scripts with an Apple script language, IntelliJ based IDEs. So you can run Apple script inside. That's pretty slick. Do it. Why does it still say this? Okay. Ignore it. Um, if we close it and open it, does it give it hot syntax highlighting? Nope. Okay. Oh well. Um, So now all we want to do is run this. And again, I'm going to go off the code that I already have somewhere. Here, I'm going to close Scratchpad for a minute. And here. So I'm just going to throw all this crap and run right now, and then we'll figure out how to actually deal with it. So that's going to get that. That's fine. That's fine there. Sub OSA script. Okay. And then it's actually in the same directory. What are we passing to this? I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm not going to worry about that right now. What do we call it? Git Safari URLs. Git Safari URLs. From format scripter. Okay, so we don't need the scripter right now. Uh, we do need sub process. Oops. User bin environment Python three import sub process. Whoops, that wasn't it. Sub process. Print sut oh say script. Uh let's see what happens. Just thinking. There's a whole bunch of URLs. That's probably as many as I have open, I'm guessing. And so now, yeah, see, there's not a whole lot to test here because like all of the rest of the stuff is happening elsewhere. So we're just going to grab that. Um, so we've got them. How do you do a Python set? Deprecated since... Well, why is it the first link then? Read the docs. Where's the actual Python docs? Find that up. This document is for an old version that's no longer supported. You should upgrade. Yeah, so. Deprecated since. Yeah, if we just change that to a three, does it work? That's better. Set, okay. Set is a tricky word. So can you just...
Pie set. I don't know if I've got set just exists in one million names. All right, Python set. Real Python set some Python. I feel like I've been here before. Oh, come on, ads, back off. The set can be created in two ways. First, you can define a set with built-in set function. In this case, the argument iter is an iterable again for a moment. Make list of tuples. So can I just fire? So this is a string. So uh, I'm gonna hit this every time, I guess. Like it would be better if I actually like tested it, like pulled out this data and tested it. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Um, I feel like I'm gonna regret not doing that. Here, let's actually do it. Why not? Is that gonna work? I don't think it's highlighting. It's not. Will this work? That worked. Uh, here. Let's see if this works. Def test. Oh, there's no way we want this. Um. Paste. Just hang on to all those. So what? how do we want to test this? Um, so we're getting it. So what we want to do is pass in a string of a bunch of stuff and then get back a set, right? So make a new test, maybe. Oh, see, it's a little slow. Test set maker. So just make sure we're good. Everything's testing. Ran test zero. Why zero? Oh, see, that's why we run the first test. Now it's running a test. So expected. Actual, so expected what we want is a set with example.com Allen FM, which is not a thing yet. It will be one day. So this is going to fail. Cool. We can close this now. Def set maker self return. Just return it. Run it. Failed. Did not pass. Set expected. Set expected at most one argument's got two. Oh, do you give it a list? Is that what it means by an iterable? iterable? Ran test. Failures. Fail. Not equal to string. Oh, okay. Expected actual. There we go. Okay, we're doing all right. So actual equals set dot set maker, right? Is that gonna work? Ram dust passed. Cool. So we're just doing like a shameless screen thing and just passing it straight back and not messing with it. Um, and now I can actually go through and pass data to it. So um, the string is gonna look like this, right? Uh, input string.
And what we want to do is we want to pass example twice and Allen FM once with new lines. So everything's still working here. Input string. Now we're going to pass input string. This is going to fail because it's expecting a different number of arguments. Come here, set maker. We're going to make it explicit. input string. So now it'll pass. No. So that make, takes one positional argument so two are given. Oh, first, that needs to be string. Second, we want to do this by name because I like doing things by name. Now run. There we go. So now we're, now we're getting data in. And so now we go through and do the actual logic here. So input list equals input string split on new lines output set equals set with that input list. So does this pass? So, we, so it compiles. And now we try and send it back. Failed. What do we do? Items in the second set, but not the first. Ah, okay. So it caught a it caught a new line. Um, caught an empty new line. So how do we take care of that? So. So if we split it, but only split Python only regex. Like you could go through the list and do another regex. But is there a way to do it like while you're doing the import? Split string based off regex, no, that's like, I don't think there's a way to do this. What's this last one? Whoops, sorry. Finding all matching string. Yeah, this is all just. Split, max split. Oh yeah, I guess we could look at Python split. String, find me split. Partition, split the string at the first occurrence of separator. Return a three tuple containing the part before the separator, the separator itself, and the part after. Interesting. Turns the list of words on the string using separator as a delimiter. If max splits is given most, the right most. Oh, okay. So you can go from the right or from the left. I gotcha. Split, yeah, max split. So you've got to, you got to reprocess it. Split lines, same thing. Yeah, so you got to reprocess it. Okay, no big deal. Um, So what you can just do is output set. Oh, so one thing, ah, oh, crap. I did something I shouldn't have done. So I want to get back to green real quick while I work on this so that I don't go all over the place. So we're going to do this for a second. Run. Failed. Because that is not valid. Didn't compile. Try it again. There you go. Okay, so I'm green, so I can actually, I can do a little work here and then make sure that I'm, I can always just get back to green. 
Um, which is the way that we can do that is we can do this. Because that's gonna fail. Right, so we can just go back back and forth uh, once we think we've got a solution here. So let's do this and target a solution. So output set equals set. And then for item in item, whatever, item in input list. Uh, we need a regex. So we're out of regex. See, I'm glad I did test. Import regex. Four items in list if re search. I'm doing this from memory. I want to see if I can get that. So pattern equals any word character. Because there has to be, yeah. Well, so there has to be a URL pattern at a minimum has to have a word, a dot, a word. Like it's impossible to be less than that because it's got to be something dot something. So this will make sure that we've got a domain. Um, which should be, I mean, it really is just anything that's got a string in it because it's the new lines that are in there, but this is more explicit and I like more explicit. So if search that in item, why didn't that work? Why is it angry? Pass? Is it angry because of pass? Okay. So if that's there, how do you append to a set? Set dot add, okay. Set dot add set, no. Output set dot add item. So we're splitting it, we're making a set, we're looping over the stuff and only adding the things that we want and then returning it. Does that work? Works, I get rid of this. All right, so there's our URLs. Set maker. Um, all right, so we we just did that to dedupe them, basically. Um, and then we need to. So now we need. See, this is where I don't know what to test because, like, what we need is a JSON object based from that set. But like, I don't need to test making JSON. Like that's, that's gonna work because the Python library is backing that up. And if that doesn't work, the world breaks. Um, so there's our set maker. Okay, so let's, let's run, let's start building this thing up. So we're gonna make it um let's split this into its own thing so i'm actually gonna take that away for a minute pass is fine so set maker gets the input string and also we don't actually need to pass that in right um actually let me take care of that ah, i'm stuck yeah let's refactor this actually first so that it's just using an internal um, string this passing passing failed wait what maybe we gotta do that there we go uh So in our test, let's actually, instead of passing the input string, let's set it this way. 
This way we can just use the variable, the instance variable. So there's that. Now it's gonna blow up because we're passing a thing that shouldn't be passed. Somewhere here. But now, is that working? Nope, failed. What do we do? Input string is not defined. Ah, aha, right. And I'm still back and forth on using input variables versus passing stuff, or instance variables versus passing stuff. Um, but this seems brighter somehow, even though it's weird. I don't know. I'm I'm so used to having like functions where you're sending stuff into functions. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, six lines. Eh, whatever. Oh, oh, okay, wait, 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 hang on. So we could actually refactor this even a little bit more. So instead of passing that back, yeah, because we're manipulating something and passing something back. And I think that's one of the things that like the ideal is you either manipulate something or you return something. You don't do both. Uh, so we can actually set that up here. So actual equals um, URL set. So this is gonna fail because that doesn't exist. And I'm just gonna shameless screen this for a second. Whoops. Self URL set equals set. Passed, okay. So now we just need to populate that. Set maker. I'm still gonna call it that for a minute. We're probably gonna change it in a second. So we can actually take this away and take this away. Here, we got less than five lines, which is one of the um, things that set URL set add. Run. Passing? No, failed. Set has no attribute URL set. Oh, wait, self. How about that? Does that work? Better. There we go. Right. So that's cool. Uh, and so I actually we can get rid of this and just make that a set that way. That's cool. Input list. Yeah, so you could pull this, like if you really wanted to, you could pull the split in here for the input list. Ah, should we do that? Is that input list of OSA? Yeah, okay, I don't know if that's, yeah, that's fine. Sometimes you, I see people put too much logic in one line, so it's kind of doing two things. It's doing the split and it's doing the loop, but I'm kind of okay with that. I'm gonna leave that there for now. Um, So set maker it really should be make URL set. Make URL set. We're gonna rename that. Oh wait. Yeah, so we don't call that, we just run it. So we're setting that, we're expecting that, we got it. This is the other one that I'm not as sure about is like what the best way, yeah, I think I want this up, right? So expected, and then you get to your setup, and then you get your actual.
Yeah, given when then. That's the... I like that. That's something I know that Ruby does. Or should it be down here? I was trying to like, I just, I want to see the flow of this. Because I like some amount of separation, especially when you end up having a bunch of junk like this that you need to pass in. That's fine. Overthinking. Or, I'm done thinking about that. If I could, yeah, I could actually do my own little Twitch thing where I format it the way that I like, which is names and then text underneath. And also get rid of all that stuff. Can I go to non chat mode, non mod mode? You're just in chat, whatever. Um, okay, so we've got our URLs. Okay, so let's set this up to actually grab def. Grab, grab. Draw URL string. So, is that a good name for that? We'll start with that. So that's this. that for now. So we make it, we're gonna alphabetize this in a second. We're gonna grab the raw strings. We're gonna make our URL set. Oh yeah, we're actually running it live. Forgot. Ooh, it's taking a while. There it goes. There's your URLs. Sweet. And then, oh, so we can actually alphabetize this stuff too, which will help get the things there. Okay, so now we just need to make a JSON, right? And then save the JSON. And I'm not, there's not really a test for that. Again, I'm not gonna test modules that are already tested. So, um, Python sort set. set s or anything else iterable sorted s returns a list of the elements in a sorted order yep okay so import json actually what you do really quick is <laughs> actually commit all these um under version files eight 
All right, so hang on. Oh, you know what? I think I'm still on master, aren't I? Yeah, I'm on the master branch. Choose new repository, dev, browser sweep, open, add repository. Good. Check out branch dev. Add pi charm files. Add base working script. Uh, add base scripts. Whatever. So we've got that, now we're going to add JSON alphabetically. And so we just want to make the JSON, well, I guess we could save it all at the same time, right? doesn't matter. Um, Save JSON. Self. Bye. Save JSON. Nope. Bye. JSON. Isn't there just a straight Python write JSON file? Oh, you just do with open, right? And then do it. With open browser save tabs dot json. I want to write to it, which is a W, not an R. JSON file, JSON file dot write, JSON dump sorted self URL set. What do we think? Survey says Might as well try it. Wah -wah. No such file or directory. With open. What? Well you're supposed to write it. Oh wait, I didn't switch it. That whole thing where I was talking about reading with writing or W's and R's? Didn't do it. Dump. Missing one required argument. Oh, I thought we had it. What's in there? Nada. Did you dump string? It's not really a string, is it? What's in here? Oh! So, uh, pi. Oh, that was it. I had the file right there. JSON pretty print. Sort keys equals true, which we don't need. Index indent equals two. That's how you do the pretty print.
JSON dumps. So I think we want to do it here. There you go. HTTPs, HTTPSs. That's cool. Yeah, and so like, whatever, you can't get, so like api.nasa.gov, it would be really cool if that was with the images.nasa.gov, but like the logic is, ooh, actually. You could, Mm, you could split and sort off of the domain name, the, the second level domain, and get everything lined up that way. So that all of your all of your domain. Oh, you could do that. Do we want to do that? I think we want to do that. Uh, first, say this. Actually, I don't want to save that file inside. Browser save tabs. Where's my get ignore? Can you copy that name? Copy. Give me file name. Give me file name. Ah, Pie Charm. Look at you. Oh, I thought workspace was supposed to be ignored. <laughs> Wait, why is that still there? Did I already commit it once? I must have. Or is it not like the that? New file. That should totally not be there. Because it's sitting right there, right? Get add dot get ignore. What am I missing? Get commit m. Try to remove that. That did it. Oh, I may have just committed it. I just added everything. I don't know, whatever, it's fine. Update workspace. I don't really know what changed. It's fine. So, Pacharm, would you like to add unversion files to the git ignore file? Mm, that sounds dangerous. Okay. So how are we going to do this? So the set is so sorted. So we've got our URLs as a set. URL list equals that. Because I just want to do this to start with. So how, I don't know. I don't want to add that yet until I've got a test to try and shoot at it. So close this. So we're gonna get images.nasa.glove here. We're gonna do this. 
can hide, you can hide, you can hide. Def test sort URLs by domain. Did it again. PyTest. So just run, make sure we're hot. Okay, we're good. So expected is going to be a list in this order. I'm going to do two NASA URLs. To Google, to Google URLs. I think that's going to be enough. So G's go before N's. Yeah, so we want to sort off Google.com first. So G's go before N's, and then developer and dub, 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 and A before I. So that's what we're shooting for. Do sets maintain order? I don't know how they would. I, oh, I guess they do. Like you're just adding to it. Does not enforce or maintain a particular order. Okay. Set is unordered, so it does not preserve the instruction. Okay, yeah. This depends on your requirements. If you have a normal list. Okay, but we can send it in. We can sort to send it in, because we need to send it into. Oh. So we're not sending it. We're just using it. Oh, we could force we could force it being set in in the method to like make sure it's sorted, which is not the correct sort, and then have the process go through and make the correct sort for us. So this is going to blow up and we're going to shameless screen it real quick. Ran two tests. Two. Wait, did that say, hang on a second. Failed. Okay. See, it needs to be red when it's bad and green when it's passed. <sighs> Precognitive stuff. We should make it happen. We will make it happen. We will make it happen. Uh, Okay. So actual equals set, and we're just going to call it from URL list. Nope, that way. So this is going to bomb because that doesn't exist. But if we do this, self URL list equals all that stuff, it should pass. Passing, okay. I'm gonna close that for now, then come here. So when that, yeah, we wanna do given when then. So given, we're gonna fix that in text expander right now.
want to leave the spaces. When? Then. <laughs> I don't know if I like the spaces there or not. I think I do. Yeah, okay, I think I like that. We'll play with that. So given... a URL set... equals to set... Again, the order doesn't matter, but I'm going to shuffle them anyways. In case it happens to like the order and sticks with it. So given that, when... Now I'm just playing with the uh, spacing, or with the uh, design. It's really what it wants to. When set... make URL list, then expect it. So this is gonna choke now. So hang on a second. So let me back this up. I want to make sure we're still green. So it should be green here, right? Ran two tests failed. What did we break? Set expects at most one already got four. Right, we need to make that a list. Okay, we're green. And we can get rid of this because we're hard coded right now. Still green, still green. Make URL list. This is gonna puke. Make URL set. L becomes becomes before. Uh, return. this. Well, actually, here, hang on. Let's just do it for real. Pass, run, passing. Yeah, I like this. Um, because this way we can actually do this and make sure that we clean this up first, because sometimes I leave that there. So I want to get back to failing. Failed. If I was smart, I would have copied it. Or cut it. Cut it. And then put it right here. Whoa. I don't know what happened there. Return that. Return. No. Self URL list equals that. Does that pass? Passes. Okay. Now I just need to add logic. Okay, so... Python sort function like how do you pass how do you make your own sort sorted key functions split key lambda okay here we go a common pattern is to sort complex objects using some sort of objects, indexes, indices as keys. Student two. K. 
key equals lambda student. Where's it getting the name student from? So just making that up and then student two. Sort by age. So it's zero, one, two. Okay. Same techniques works for objects. So. Okay, so we need to. Ugh. We need to pull a regex with the domain and then sort off of that. Key function patterns shown above are very common. So Python provides convenience functions to make accessor functions easier and faster. The operator module has item getter, attribute getter, and method caller function. Using these functions, the above examples come simpler and faster. Key item getter two, key age. Sending and descending. Okay. This wonderful property lets you. Okay, so notice how the two records for blue retain. Okay, hang on. Backing all the way up. Sorts are guaranteed to be stable means that when multiple records have the same key, the original order is preserved. Notice how two blue retain the original order. Is it guaranteed to proceed? Okay. It's wonderful property that lets you build complex sorts and series of sort steps. For example, the sort the student age by descending grade to the age sort first and then do the grade. Okay, that's cool. Sorted. This can be abstracted out into a wrapper function that can call a list and tuples of field in order to sort them on multiple passes. Sometimes reading documentation is hard. Def multi sort. For key. parameters okay so that was the old way the old way probably shouldn't use the old way so if we make a multi-sort xs what does xs get us doesn't really explain that and specs multi-sort list student objects We're gonna go to Code Runner. So I like this because it's fun to jump out, or I like jumping out to something that's not in the test environment and all this other stuff, and just like completely, completely getting away from it. So URL set. Here's our set. Import re. We're gonna want whoops, forty three. We're gonna want that. So whatever, print URL set. Everybody happy? Ah, uh, everybody's not happy. There you go. Yeah, so image, yeah, so it completely changed the order. That's okay. So. Sorted, set. So this, this is not the sort we want to have, but it'll guarantee. So NASA, Google, NASA, Google. Okay. 
So that'll that's that'll always be the input that we put in, which is good because that way we can make sure that our set is going to, or so that our list is going to set uh, our list is going to sort properly. So function def um, sort by domain um, URL set. I kind of want to put a test on this. By test one file. Where's my single maybe? Yeah, it worked. Okay. So this just runs tests in one file. So it just I can add test in here and make it go. Um, def set up. I'm actually going to add this into my, I'm going to make an update to my thing here. Global, oops, my class, my class, that should still run, right? Yep. So test URL list. So expect, actually here, let's do this. PT. <laughs> Slow to move back, but uh, it's all right. Oh, I didn't get this tab right. All right, run, whoops, run. Yeah, it worked. So given URL set, sorted, given this, still pass, when my class Make URL list. It's going to fail. Now it's going to pass. Then our expected is going to be our list with this. And for now, our actual is going to have the same thing because we just want to green it. Hey, look, it's green, so I know that it's green. Here, just do that. So now, actual equals my class dot URL list. I'm just gonna fail.
def init self self URL list equals, which is still going to fail because I didn't populate it. Now it should pass. Now I can get rid of this. Now I can do that. Okay, so now we can do make URL lists can actually be what do, what sets that. And this can just be a list again. Whoops. Oh, actually, yeah, why not this? I sort domains, sort domains. Uh, sort URL is on by domain, would have been better, but whatever, it's fine. So there's that, We're still green. All right, so we're passing the sorted list in and now we're making the list and we just need to get the right list out or the right list to produce. So it sounds like we want to try and do this. This can be abstracted out into a wrapper function that can take a list and tuples a field and order to sort them on multiple passes. Multiple sort excess specs for key res reverse and reserve reversed specs. Excess sort key adder getter. Jeez. I don't need that. Python sort custom. Is that exactly what I searched for earlier? Refacting some old code of mine and came across this. Sort method takes optional arguments for controlling comparisons. This is from a long time ago. As a side note, here's a better alternative key lambda x x dot foo. As a side note, here's a better alternative to implementing same sorting. Okay, let's sort key is lambda x where x dot foo. If a dot foo, b dot foo. Oh, okay, so you, you're taking, okay, so you're taking x. Hang on, we might be able to do this. So, all right, let's start by just getting the domains, right? Um, import re uh, domain equals, or URL equals, example.com. We should run tests on this too. Um, test, 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 test,
Like it's not critical for like what I'm doing, but like it's the practice of testing. So this is hot, right? Yeah, it worked. Uh, you know what? We're gonna uncomment this because I like the green. Actually, we're gonna do it this way. To make sure that really was all tapped properly. I have a little bit of a headache. Ooh, I have Advil. Yeah, for most things you shouldn't do this. It makes it harder to since you have to jump up and down between the code to switch the actual stuff. But like I like I like it for this type of thing. Like um it's just another tool in the toolbox. Alright, we green? We're green. You can go away. Alright, so how do we want to test this? Def test get domain from URL. I think I know the pattern we want to use here. Self. Um, do, 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 do. So slow. I mean, it's still cool that it works. Like, it's really, it's kind of a neat thing for like, ah, oh, just, we know how many characters we just wrote, go back. So given URL equals example.com, when my class, uh, so when domain equals, because this one we actually are going to get back. We're not manipulating anything. So we, we're going to return a value. When my class get domain from URL, and this is going to puke. We're going to be explicit. Oh, we're also going to puke here. Because we don't have arguments passing properly. I like being explicit. URL equals URL. Now we're passing. Oh, and actually this would be here. So this is gonna pass. Cause string is not equal to two, true. That's your bounce. Given that, then that. Yeah, see, I don't know. Again, I'm just, I'm playing with the other stuff here. Given expected equals that. When that, then. Given expected equals true. When, then, right? Oh, that's pretty good.
I kind of like that. Test get domain. Yeah, I like that. Or text expander, we're gonna update that. It went away. But I think I see what's going on here now with the sort stuff. So basically when you pa you pass in, so as you do the sort, there's like values in the sort, right? So A, B, C, D. You pass in those values into the lambda as a key. I don't understand what the key comes into. But what you get out of it is you pass, like you set X as A, I think. So A would be an object with foo inside of it. So the value of A's dot foo is compared to the value. It, the next is you pass in B to the X. Like we need better words here than X and foo. Like that makes it harder to understand. But I think I see what's going on, I think. So I might be able to do this. So yeah, so it looks like, so if you take Lambda of X, you might be able to actually call out to a function here. Is that where we saw? Key Lambda student, student two. Key Lambda student, student.age. Okay, yeah, I get this. I still don't, wait. That looks different. The sort key equals. But this has the objects inside of it. Maybe that's the difference between sort and sorted. Nah, but that's the case. But so does this show us... Student, multi-student, list, grades, true, age. I was trying to see how to call out with a lambda to a function. I mean, lambda is a function, but can you call out to another thing? I bet you can. Maybe we'll try that in a minute. So we got we got this going. Now we just need to populate it for real. Um, so our URL is coming in. Oh, and actually, what we should do is what we really want is our expected is example.com. So that's gonna fail, and now we're just gonna pass expected.com back. Well, actually, let's pretty do this. Domain equals expected.com. Whoop. Domain. No. Uh, pi get domain from URL. Wait. Sort domains. Okay, so this is this is the function to do it. And then we're gonna take that regex and put it in the sort. Okay, I'm I got confused there for a second. So there's our thing. So now domain's gonna equal regular expression. No. So we gotta do matches equals regular expression search for the pattern of St 
Dark of the String. HTTP. This is only going to be be web stuff. P. S question mark. Oh, S question mark. Well, actually, hang on. We're gonna. I'm getting too. I'm getting ahead of myself. Start of the string. Can we just capture that? Domain equals matches one. RE is not defined. We should import RE. Now we get failed, halted. Missing one required positional argument string. Oh yeah, yeah, we need to pass something to it. Example.com. Okay, so we're matching exactly the string. Um, and so now we actually try and eat away to it. So HTTP and then S uh, actually, hang on a second. I gotta go make pits up. I'll be right back. I, yeah, I want to do another test for S versus not S. Uh, but whatever. Be right back. I should make a, um, I don't know, a video or something for uh, be right back. I like keyboard camera in the back. Yeah, it's still just a little corner right there. Just barely. Disappears, but. 
whatever. Uh, yeah, so I want to make another test. for that, but so I'm going to go ahead and then we also need to do this is another one of those things where it's like I'm really glad I'm getting the test stuff going because it's like, ah, you know what I should do? I should be, well, so should, I'm going to keep testing here, but I think I'm going to move these tests probably into the main thing as well because we want to have, like, I want the assurance that it's working there as well. I just, I wanted to get, I needed to get out of it because my head was still kind of all in that space and this lets me just focus on this one thing. Um, So we don't want to test those. Whatever. It's gonna have to have a slash there. Like that's the way domains work. So if it doesn't have a slash there, it's gonna puke, but I don't think that's possible. Okay, back to this one. Yeah, so I'm not going to try. I'm only going to try. Yeah, so I was going to, for a second, I was going to try and get all of them to work and then pass the test in, but that's not the right way to do that, right? The right way to do that is get this one going. So I'm actually going to let that sit. And then really what we want is, oh, we need a, we need another one that has something dot dub 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 dot example dot com let me just keep making these while i think of them because i don't want to forget them so that's gonna be s and then not s s and not s and then we need stuff with junk after it. I just want to test a bunch of different things. So what we really want is slash word, slash word, right? Now it's a slash dot, ah, slash dot. I haven't been a slash dot in years. They nuked my account at one point. I think they nuked everybody's account and like start over or whatever, but still. So what does this get us? Nope. So went too far too fast. Roger that. Oh, here, let's go back. Right? Okay. Oh, slash word plus, right? There we go. Slash word plus. Slow and steady. Slash dot. There we go. So there's that. And then... Yeah, we can go ahead and use that. And we can use test to, test to drive. So, oh, except, of course, we were sending... <laughs> we weren't actually testing that whole time. We were testing failure to see if the thing exploded, but now we're actually testing the 
thing that we're sending back, right? Because we put something there. Let's just verify that that fails. Yeah. Oh, because it didn't match. Um, none type object failed. Execution halted. Why is none type? That should have matched. Oh, no, yeah, it's not matching. Okay, whatever. I get it. It's fine. Matchy match. Cool. See, the only trick is this makes it like super long. I keep going back and forth on this. Maybe if you do that, given URL. that either. I just, I haven't found the, like, the way, like, the aesthetic that I like of it. something gross but actually here we'll do it in the next one test or wait ah, that was all over the place Zip. it's neat that it's getting response back that the position oh but it went completely the wrong place that time right as I was talking about it I think I'm gonna drop that part. Oops. Because it's just slow and I can click where I need it to go. Nah, so when I, I want to have them, I was going to see about pulling it out, but. Oh, you know what we should do? So, uh, the, all it does is actually grabs, um, grabs the URLs and the titles from Safari. So there's a Apple script that I've got running um, that if I can remember where it is, I'll show you uh, in another version of it that is this page archiver and the Apple script is here. Uh, let me bring this up. Is that the right tab? Yeah. So this Apple script basically just can, has the capability of talking to Safari. It goes through and right here, it looks at every window that Safari has up and then for every window, it looks at every tab that's available, loops through the tabs, and then grabs the names. Well, so this one grabs names and URLs. So I'm not grabbing the contents of the page. I'm just grabbing the, and the new one is just grabbing URLs. Cause basically what I want to have the capability of doing is when I've got a ton of URLs open like this, hit a button, have everything effectively just sweep off to the side in a stash open and do other stuff. And then when I'm ready to bring them all back, hit another button and have all of them load again. So I'm not doing like a, a an actual download of the contents, um, just grabbing the URLs in this case. And then for the other one, the original one, what I was doing is uh, I, I, have an, I have it running, I have the other one that gives you names and titles running every five minutes. And then that builds a web page for me every day showing all the places that I went to over the course of the day. So I'm basically just leveraging that and just using the URLs, but that's where this is going. So I can see where I went, get back to it. And like over time, um, one of the things I was thinking that might be interesting to do is like, you know, in a year, go look at all the Google searches I did and stack them up over the year and see how many times I did duplicate things or whatever. I mean, it's like, it, it becomes data at that point to play with, right? Um, but I just thought it would be kind of fun to do. So that's, that's kind of the methodology of where this is headed. Um, right now, what I'm trying to do is I want to sort the uh, so 
I've got all the tabs and I'm sucking down the URL. So I've got those. That was pretty easy. That was just copying the existing script. But what I want to do right now, or what I'm working on right now is sorting by domain. Cause like right now the tabs are all over the place, right? So here's Google, here's Google, here's Python docs, here's Python docs, here's Stack Overflow, Stack Overflow, Stack Overflow, right? And so I want to sort by domain, but I don't want to sort by um, the full domain, right? The full, do uh, uh, the, the complete domain, because then like developers.google.com would be different or be farther away than www.google.com, right? So if it just does a hard sort. So what I'm working on right now is just a regex to grab the domains so that I get just google.com and just nasa.com. And then that's what I use for the sort keys so that when I sort, it goes through the top level domain kind of all the way down. Um, <laughs> if you had a Mac, right on. Um, yeah, and so it, I don't know, can you, there's gotta be something. Um, Chrome get URL from CLI. How can I open Google Chrome? Via the, so you can open it via the command line. I know that. Open Chrome URLs from the command line. Now we want to go the other way. I, I'll bet there's a way to do it. I'll bet there's a way to talk to Chrome. Chrome CLI get current URL for page. I don't know. Try something. How to activate now. How do I get the URL, the current tab from Google? There you go. Use Chrome's tabs queries like this. Yeah, so there's probably TLD extractor. Okay, cool, and Python. I don't know that one. Oh, are you telling me that there's already a thing? I think I just figured out what is this is gonna be. I think that just clicked. I'm guessing this stands for, yep. Should've looked for the, uh, should've looked for the module. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, cool. That's perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, I was, I, I think I was there other than all the weird exception cases. Cause I know domains get super crazy. Um, but for the classes of stuff that I was looking at, I think I had it like, you know, the 95 percentile or whatever. Um, but that's, that, that's happened to me three times in the past two weeks where it's like messing around with something, messing around with something. Uh, and then all of a sudden there's a module for it. Uh, the other two times it wasn't exactly my fault though. Cause I was searching for API stuff and I just, like, I was so overwhelmed with other documents that the, like the Python module stuff just didn't float to the top. Um, but that one I should have Googled for. Yep. Oh, you run a link shortening stuff. Nice. Which one do you run? Or is it like a your one or like a big one or like a, you know, a, not just for you, I guess is the best way to do the thing, uh, ask the question, or is it just a, a personal thing? So now with this magic, today I learned Did this set up, hang on a second, did this set up in a virtual environment? Yeah, it should have, okay. Uh, terminal. Ah, uh, crap, now I need to actually go, oh, that's fine, whatever, do that. So, new file, browser, sort, test, pi. Yeah, it, so if it's new, um, I like it. Minity dot link, that's good. Hang on. 
I'll give you a little bit of... I, I have no Google Juice to give you because I, my site doesn't have Google Juice. But if it did, I'll, this link will go up on my list. Um, and so I'll, I'll shoot a link to you. Um, this is cool. Share to Instagram, TikTok. Nice. Cool. Uh, I can't spell. Sweet. Oh, your uh, QR codes too. Nice. Copy URL. Slick. Ooh, REST API. Okay. Current suit URL for most popular. Okay. Sweet. Open graph and Twitter cards. Nice. Very cool. That's slick. What'd you uh, What'd you build it in? Feel my masking. Or like how How'd you get it running? Like it? I like it. What's uh? Can you talk about your stack? Seems like a very personal question. Browser sort test. All right, we're going to copy all this stuff in because we need to be in an environment that has that stuff. Yeah, whatever, it's fine. Does this run? Yeah, it runs. Wait, why didn't it? Oh, is it running the unit test stuff again? Come on. It's fighting me. Ooh, that's not cool. <laughs> Was he just hammering you? See why, like, why people gotta be. See, it seems like techies should appreciate other techies stuff. Oh, you gotta poke on a little bit. Yeah, whatever. Uh, bah. But still, don't be a don't be a jerk. Uh, so how how do we change? I don't want to run unit tests, edit configurations. How do I make it just run the Python code of this? Because I'm dealing with unit tests myself. I just delete this. Nope. Yep. Here. If I do this, does this work? Uh oh. We're good. Run. I don't want to run unit tests. I want to just run it by itself. Nope. I don't want to run unit tests. How do we just run? I copy it out and try and run it once without it. There we go. Does that set the thing? Now will it run? There we go. Okay, that's a cheat, but hey, it worked. Oh, I don't know. Animate.js. Cool, okay, nice. Sweet. I don't know OFC, what that stands for. Overflow control? Probably not it at all. Also, I just figured out a hack, which is nice. Okay, do we install this yet? I think we did, right? RSTU. So let's put it right here. Everybody happy? Everybody's happy. Yeah, it worked. So I'm going to drop that and just see the uh, greens. Whoops. He says making money. I 
should split that again to get that last thing there, but whatever. Um, okay, so here's here's where we're at. I'm trying to this now. I'm trying to build the sort, and so we're gonna make URL list. Wait, why did that? How did that pass? Oh, because it's up here. So this is it sorted, and now we actually just need to see if we can implement the sort. And oh, of course. <laughs> nice. Yeah, and I so Apache Flask. I actually don't know. I don't think I know Apache Flask. Is that? I'm thinking of something different. I think. What's the? Is Flask like Python Flask? Isn't that how to deploy a Flask application? Yeah, okay, that's it, right? Basic Flask, okay. For some reason, I split a, flat, a Apache Flask together, split together, moved it together. So a little confused there, but it's just a but Flask is the thing, right? Sweet. Yeah, I did, so I'm doing some Django stuff now too. Um, I did a little bit of Flask stuff, and I'm doing some Django stuff, getting kind of in the Python world. Um, and I know one of the things I talked about was you can use some people like using the Flask Flask templates with Django too because they like the templates better. Um, I don't really have enough of a idea about either one. Um, the I I basically found Django first, but have heard a bunch of good stuff about Flask too, and I'm like hmm, maybe I should give them that a shot. Uh, but again, I didn't really know about it until I was already kind of down the way in Django. Uh, cool. So let's see. Where was our sort? Oh, you know what else would be interesting? You could you could actually make this. Well, you can just hit the button twice, basically. But you could actually just say bang and resort all of your browser tabs by domain. And so instead of this craziness that I have up here, flush them. That maybe yeah. Well, I mean that's that's what will happen if you save them and post them, but you can make that one button. Uh, where's my yeah? So sort lambda. Okay, right. So this is what we got to build. So make URL list, self URL list. Let me see what this test does. So. URL list equals, we're going to make it a list. Oh, actually, no, whoops, come here. So we're just going to go, first we're just going to sort the set. That gets passed in. We passed in a set, right? URL set sorted. Well, I guess step one is we should pass that in. Self URL set equals set. So I mainly as a hobby these days, um, I used to do a bunch of web stuff and then slowly but surely got into like management e project management -y type stuff. Um, didn't do nearly as much web. Uh, I'm working a little bit doing data. Um, not visualization, but data, data warehousing, data lake stuff. Uh, but I don't write very much code. So the streams are where I sit there and actually do code and kind of get back into it. And I'm so far behind on so much stuff or like not behind, but like so much stuff has moved on so much farther than the last time I looked at it in the web world. Um, and I just I never was a did a lot of like test driven development in Python or whatever. So I'm like, I'm trying to stretch my chops here a little bit. Um, and I found too, it's like, it's really nice when it's just, I get to just do whatever, like I'm making a browser thing, I'm redoing a website, like all that stuff. So mostly for hobby, a little bit of work is the TLDR for that, uh, which I probably should have said first. Uh, all right, so hang on, let's see if we can figure out. So there's our set. We're actually gonna pass that in now, right? URL, whoops, set. So we can do mc.url set. Everything's still passing. Or did I break something yet? Nope, still passing. 
So now we call make URL list. Make URL list. And what we want to do is actually look at the return value there. Which I don't know how that's working. Oh, because we set it right here. Okay, cool. So we're to start building now and we're going to see what happens. Self URL at sort URL set. Okay, we're not doing anything with the code yet, so that should still run. And then I'm just gonna print here. Hey, look, political ads. So if you're a list, so this will let us see what's sorted before we actually get there, right? Except it's not running. Why isn't it? Oh, because I'm in the wrong key. Failed, one error. Uh-oh, sort is not defined. What? Sorted. Oh, 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 oh. URL set dot sort. Right. Back to happy, back to happy. So I did like I didn't do any stuff in college programming wise. Uh all just self-taught stuff. Um it's just kind of I don't know, if you built a website and you're doing that kind of stuff, I, you're going to be okay. <laughs> um it's like I don't know what the industry's like out there trying to get gigs or whatever. Um but like if you're if you're 20 and you've already built a website and somebody's hacking you from India, like you're well on your way. So don't don't fret. Um or don't sorry, I hate it when people say that. Like, don't worry. Like, if you're gonna worry, you're gonna worry. But like have some faith, I guess. Uh or have yeah, have some confidence that you're gonna be alright with it and you'll get in. Uh, because that's I think that actually helps the process, right? Is a little bit of like, ah, I can do this. I mean, don't be a cock about it but um yeah keep keep doing your thing like uh and so did you so you said you're only 20 no college education yeah so the other one an interesting one that's just come up um so i've got a professional friend that's talking a lot about uh, education these days and how college is a weird is in a weird place um, and I think this is what he was talking about you check this out so my understanding and I've only like skimmed this but these are online courses like there's online courses all over the place right but these are one Google has designed. And basically they've designed it to give you what if, what amounts to a certification that you can use in place of a degree or like, so my understanding of this is basically if you go to Google and you say, I don't have a degree, but I have your data analyst thing here and have made it all the way through, they're going to look at you. Um, and it's interesting because so like I, I I don't have a college degree either, um, but I I got lucky and that at the point when I was getting into the workforce, I was doing web stuff and nobody else was doing web stuff. So me not having a college degree is different from people not having a college degree today, to, today except for the fact that I think it's shifting back to that point where as long as you can show the skills through things like the certifications, and maybe not today, but like as that progresses, like it feels like we're at a turning point with that. So that this, so that this is another valid thing for getting your foot in the door. Um, and for me, like, so like, I don't know, like I, there's all that advice out there, like do stuff and like whatever, but like you're doing things. So that's, it would, 
I think you're in good shape, basically, if you're walking up to somebody and saying, hey, here's a thing that I built that's out in the world that's live. That has a tremendous amount of weight. Um, but look at this stuff, too, and see. Uh, again, I've only I've only glanced at it, but it's worth a look. And my buddy, who's a college professor, was like, this is super interesting because like where where does college stand in the role of today? Um, <laughs> social anxiety. Yeah, that's that's a thing. Um, I, I don't have help for you there other than hopefully it's not crippling and uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to say good luck like an ass, but like I believe in you. I believe in everybody, so, but I believe in you, because I believe in everybody. It's, uh, sometimes things are harder than others, but I think you got it. You can do it. I mean, you're talking to me. And yes, I know it's through text, but still, you're chatting. I don't know, do you stream by any chance? Because that's a weird thing that I've found, is by streaming, I'm actually getting more confident in, like, this like in streaming but also just in general and like i don't know it's it's an interesting it's an interesting thing um it's it's probably not for everybody but it it's i think it's an experiment most people should do and for like five maybe ten times at least five times like doing it once doesn't count and recognize you're not going to have anybody following you but it's just about doing the presence and like there might be an audience out there because like 99% of the time I'm talking to nobody, but that's cool. I don't mind. It's still fun. All right, so we got our URL list sorted. I can't speak. <laughs> Start that way. Start with no camera. Um, or here's another idea. Start with a camera, but point this camera at like a stick figure drawing of you. So like there's a camera in the mix, but it's not you, but the, like you're still like streaming a video. And then every now and then, like, move the stick figure or something. Um, but no, it's it, it's definitely it's definitely weird to be to have the camera stuff. You you get over it faster than you would think. The one that still gets me the most is hearing my voice. Like that messes with me more than seeing myself. Um, but I've kind of gotten used to that too. So it's all. It's all about it's just like it's just like programming, right? You got to get over the initial hump before you can have a understanding of what's going on and know how to do it better and all that other stuff. Same thing, just with a little bit more like intensity because like people are watching. But so what? And some people are going to be assholes, right, on stream, so or on chat. That's what this little block button is for. I'm not going to block you. That's actually one of one of my minor fears with this is if I try and click on somebody's name and accidentally like ban them, I should probably turn that off. Yep. See it. All right. So we're sorting to nothing. So is that printing out? Yeah. Okay. So we're so, oh, 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 hang on. We're not printing out anything. Why aren't we printing out anything? Got our list. That's kind of a mess. This is all gross. Um, so actual lists. Okay, we've got our set. So we're setting our set. Set, set, set. Then we're running make URL list, which is here, which just straight populates it, which is where we should see Because the set's already there. So why isn't that printing? Let's see this. So there's our set. Self URL set dot sort. Why didn't that go? There's nothing in it. Oh, maybe I'm not. S no. 
MC URL set equals that. I'm doing something silly. Init URL set run. There's our set. So can't you just sort a set? Sort a set. It's still the first one, it's not the second one. Why doesn't that work? Hang on. Test, no, where's our... Make URL search w do. Word, word, set item, what? Oh, okay, so that's making sure. Oh, you know what I should do? Hang on. I'm gonna make that more clear. Kind of all over the place right now. Run to test, tests are good. So come here, domain match. I understand now why a little bit more you would want to name your regex patterns. Domain match item. Is that still gonna run? Sweet, okay. I hadn't thought through that. I always didn't like this being two steps. I liked just having the regex pattern there because, but most of the time in the examples, those weren't named meaningfully. That is named meaningfully. I like that. Now, why is this not working? So, so sort. I guess you gotta do sorted instead of sort. Oh, I have many tabs open. Sorted. Okay. I thought you'd do dot sort and it was the same thing. Yeah. Oh, maybe it only, uh, I bet it does itself in place. Is that what's happening? I'll bet that's what's happening. So that's going to return none, but once I sort it, if I print it, I think it's going to be the same thing because it's still, yeah, none. none. Okay, so it sorts in place. I understand. So we don't need that. We, we can use sorted. So there's our URL list. Okay, I'm back to understanding what's happening. So just to start with, just to tone test it here, we're gonna do sorted, sorted. Self URL set, nope, URL set. Everybody happy? Everybody's happy. Wait, we're we running the right code? Probably. Um, yes, we know we are because it's actually green down here and that is how that should work. So there's sorted. And now print self URL list, right? And that's not necessarily gonna be sorted. Yeah, so NASA, Google, NASA, Google. Okay, so not sorted. Cool, that's what we want. Hey, he's back. How's the snack? I need to get food here at some point too. Um, all right, so now we start getting into all this craziness. So key lambda x, lambda x foo. So key lambda x oh actually you know the other thing i should do here real quick is look up tld extract again <laughs> nice 
think there's a song about coffee and nicotine that if you're 20 is older than you. Nope. Oh, wow, Otis Redding? Okay, it's older than me. This is not at all what I was thinking of. Who knows? Uh, nicotine, not my thing, but coffee I get. And I got a... I also have doctor prescribed pills that help me function too, so... I don't need the nicotine. I have my own uppers, basically. Uh, TLD extract. So TLD extract, that's it, huh? So if we do... All right, let's try this. Just throw it in here and see what happens. So key equals lambda x x. Cross fingers. Holy crap, it didn't blow up. It also didn't work. I am suspicious of X dot domain. Not that I don't trust you necessarily. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, it's also not actually a thing, um, which I. I guess isn't surprising or whatever, but um Oh I'll boot up. String has no object. Uh let me look at it again. Oh, extract. Gotcha. TLD extract. Wait, did I do that? TLD extract. Oh, 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 I think I see what you're saying. It's going to show me right here somewhere, right? Let's see if I read you. Like that, I think is what you're saying. Oh, got green. Google, Google. NASA, NASA. That's it. That is it. Yeah, because I, I pre-sorted it in the set going in so that I forced it to be, you know, API NASA, something Google, NASA Google. And so it's that every time in the test for consistency, and now it's spit out properly. Um, and so the real test will be, so that was, I'm just printing that. Now, if we actually comment this out and send that back to the test, what happens? And we're green. Sweet. Thank you kindly. I was almost there with mine, but I, mine would have broken like eight different ways um, over the course of time. So this is better. That's cool. Um, yeah, so that's the function right there. Nice. Yeah, exactly. Come on, TLD folks. Yes. Oh, it's funny. I haven't, whoops. I don't know where I'm going anymore. Oh, my stomach is actually growling. I don't know if you heard that. Uh, I've never actually looked latest versions that go to. I'm assuming this is in a repository. Homepage. Stats. Hey, I wonder if this guy's a Twitter. Topics, utilities. Menu. Sponsor. Download files that take me to GitHub. Install packages. I was just going to look at the source for a second, but now I'm not because that 
is not coming up to me right now. There it is. It was already open somewhere. DLD extract up high. Yeah, this gets a little nasty. Ooh, I don't know about this one. What is this? I can domains. Okay. That's a long thing. I've never seen that before. That's cool. I didn't even know about it. You have a Twitter? We'll find you in a minute. Extract result. I don't know, I figured, hey, I'll look, let's look at the source code, see what's going on. He uses uh, inline comments too, which is something I like. TLD extract. Good documentation. Yeah, it's a non-trivial file, that's for sure. Mine was just going to be like a single regex, so this is better. I didn't, I don't know why I thought to look at the source code. I n never really do that. It's been in my brain for forever to like start reading source code. And I just realized that like modules might be a good place to do that. Because every time I've heard about like, ah, oh, go look at the source code. The only thing I can think of is like giant projects or whatever, but something like this is probably a really good thing to do. Um, read the source, source code. Yeah, that'd be fun to kind of go through and extract out what's going on. Huh, I'm going to do that. I like that. just to see how people do things. Um, I don't know, there's another one that's out there that I did a while ago, uh, exorcism.io, where you can go through and they've got all these little, uh, find me Python, Python. Basically 118, they've got all these little exercises and you go through them and when you do them, it's cool because you like, they give you tests and you get the test to pass but then you can go see how other people solved it as well. And I've only done one or two of them, but it was super interesting. Cause it's like, you know, it feels like I can think of like two ways to do this thing. And then there's like 50 ways to do the thing. Um, so that's on my list of stuff to do as well is kind of go through some of those and bang around with them. Yeah, it's good. Um, it's also, it's good practice and it gets you thinking a little bit. Um, I looked at Code Wars a while ago. I didn't have a good sense of it one way or the other. Um, I, you know, just breezed over it basically. Didn't get enough of a uh, get enough of a sense of it to actually know anything about it. Okay, so here we go. So this is saving our JSON, self-sorted. So all we got to do, yeah. So I'm not going to test. I'm not gonna test this sort function in here. Really? Like, I know it works from this other one, so I'm just gonna throw this in. Sorted, self URL test, so we're gonna do that. Oh, we gotta add that. Import that. So if we run this, grab all our tabs. Is it saving the JSON to here? A's, B's, C's, D's, GitHub's, developers, Google's, Google Com, developers, Google. Ah, uh, we should pass it. 
no, I'm not going to pass it through twice. This is close enough. I, I want to I want to move on with this. But like you could pass and eventually I'll come back to it and pass it through twice to get the third level domains sorted as well. But right now it's close enough to have all the Google stuff together. I have a lot of Google tabs open right now. Cool. So that's it. I mean, that's got it. Vides? I don't know what that is. Veed? I don't remember any of these. Oh, so I, was, I was looking for videos. Um, 117 tabs open at the moment. Uh, not including duplicates. So, getting there. Uh, okay, so the next thing to do is close them. Uh, <laughs> eh, 117. Uh, that's why I want this. Thirty, you're getting there. You'll 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 get there. I believe in you. Uh, and that's one of the so that's one of the other reasons that I like this idea of doing the sorts. And a bunch of those are like Google searches and stuff. Um, oh, that's something else you could build. It's a button that just like close all my Google searches. Um, like I just like this. Like I keep thinking about like all these ways that you can actually interact with the browser now that I've got the the way to talk to it. Um. Cause like I've got another one, so actually let's see. Oh wait, well, it wouldn't tell you. So I've got another one that's on here. Uh, close duplicate tabs. I don't have it re returning a count of how many it goes, but it's the same thing where it actually goes through and looks at all the tabs, finds duplicates, and closes all the dupes. Um, just to make it a little bit easier to deal with. Uh, but let's find. Oh, that actually is helpful because what I can do that code is gonna help me. Um, where is that code? Clean sweep launchpad runner. Where did I put it? I've been moving stuff around and I don't know where anything is anymore. Is it launchpad? I don't think I call that directly. Commands. Oh yeah, maybe. Oops. Support window resizers. That's not there. You go. Close duplicate tabs. That's what I'm looking for. Huh. It calls a thing called close duplicate duplicate tabs in Keyboard Maestro. So it's in here. These are all over the place too. Center, close duplicate tabs. There we go. Okay, so here's the closed duplicate tabs Apple script. I can't make this any bigger, unfortunately, so I hope you're on a decent sized screen. Um, I try and keep the fonts large enough that if you're on smaller screens, you can see it, but I can't, this one, you can't control. Though what I could do is this, I guess. Come here. Doesn't highlight, but whatever. So, Really, all I need to do is run this these two loops. So this gets the one, this one's in JavaScript, right? So JavaScript for automation, which is the Mac. So it's Apple Script, but JavaScript for the same thing. Um. So all I really need to do is do these two loops and just close the window. Yeah. So I want to put that actually in, I'm going to use that as a script to put in directly inside the PyCharm project. This is a mess right now, but whatever. Um, so there's the get Safari URLs. And now we want to have close Safari. Close Safari tabs. I should say nuke, but like that would be confusing to me later. Close all Safari tabs. Apple script. Apple script. Oh, nice. 
what's uh like what type of browser extension like a oh like a browser extension for your site i'm with you um the i've never actually made well that's not true i made some browser extensions way back um you just want something like so you could you could have like a chrome thing like a button that you could hit and have it do the shorten is that what you're talking about All right, so we're gonna come in here. So saf Safari, new application Safari. That sounds good. We don't really need URLs or tabs. So there's our two walkers. I don't actually care about any of this. All we're really gonna do is Safari, Windows, <laughs> this is like, oh, come on. PyCharm's hotkeys are different and it breaks my brain. Safari, Windows, Window Index. Oh, wait, you got to reverse it. You can't do it from the top because the end. So I ran into this earlier. One of the reasons this took a while was. In the Safari browser, like you have, say, say you have ten tabs and they're open, they're zero through ten or zero through nine, right? If you close tab zero, they all shift. So now it's zero through eight. So you can't run a loop over the over them, saying start start at zero and go up because you keep eating itself and your loop ends up going past it as it as the line of available tabs shrinks your iteration goes over it so it only hits every other one and it errors out after a few of them right yeah chrome and you are okay i'm with you um yeah I, so doing uh well doing extensions is all my list of stuff to do uh i i did one so actually the thing that i did i think a while ago wasn't an extension it was grease monkey or um I think there's another name for it. Nope. Browser extension. Tamper monkey. Tamper monkey. Yeah, you got it right there. So I messed around with tamper monkey for a while, um, but I don't think I ever did any actual like uh, I I looked at extensions for one of the browsers. I don't really remember which one, but then I found Tamper Monkey, and I was like, "This is easier." Uh, cool. All right, so let me figure out. So did I? So Windows index equals zero so far, and then we're going up through Safari that way. Here's the reverse. So I need to reverse it. So I need to grab them. I do want to grab that. So what I want to do is just make a matrix. So we're going to call this tab. I can do a constant, right? Because it's not going to change from an array constant. Um, tab locations and then we don't want to close here we want to push to tab locations so that here we can do tab locations and tab locations reverse this is good that I have all this code because that was a pain to figure out understand why that was there though hang on uh let current url push the current url otherwise if url index oh that's where okay so that's actually where you close it right whoa wait a minute oh okay i think i got it 
Yeah, so in here we're pushing our tab locations. Here we're reversing our tab locations. And then we just close it, okay. I kind of want to leave it called bad tabs index. Does this have a good find and replace? Nope, that didn't work. Come here. Bad tabs index goes to tab locations index. And I realized I'm using snake case instead of whatever the other case is, but say let me. So bad tabs equals tab locations. It's all tab stuff. It's all tab stuff. Close. All right. So hopefully I don't need any of those tabs because when I run this, I think it's going to close everything. Yep. So there's that. All right, so let me run my sweep up tabs again. Because I think I opened some other tabs and I just want to see if it changes. 119. Yeah, so tamper, I opened Tamper Monkey or something in there, right? Okay. So now, moment of truth. I'm going to put this up here. Oh, actually, I guess we can call it, I might as well call it from the way we're going to call it, right? So sweep up tabs. Nuke. Ah, I want to call it that, but it's going to mess with me later. Close all Safari tabs. Get it right here. All right, so just make sure it's working. Yeah, so we're still grabbing everything. And then, so here's our OSA script call, which this time we just run here and we call close all Safari, I'm gonna spell all this wrong. Tabs, Apple, script. <laughs> all right, you ready? Here, actually, I think I've got multiple windows open, hang on. So there's window one. Here's window two. All right, put those up there, whoops. Up there and up there so we can see them. And then theoretically, wow, that's really hard to see. Let's close that. Do we get the windows back? Okay. Three, two, one. Didn't do nothing. That was anticlimactic. Slow process run. Yeah, it's probably fine. It's probably eating the rest of my machine somewhere else. Oh wait, make your L list. Whoa. Why is that hard coded? Hang on, something went weird. They're all there. I don't understand what's happening. Make your own list. That is scary because those. Get raw strings. Close all Safari tabs. Wait a minute. I don't understand what's happening. 
grab URL strings, make URL set. Oh, I don't need the list anymore. I don't make that anymore. Okay, that's why it's... I think I can kill that. Because I just make the set, and then I spit it straight to JSON. I don't build the list of URLs. Still doesn't explain why this didn't fire. Uh, okay, let's do it on the command line. See what happens. Uh, dev, what are we doing? Browser sweep, clean sweep. I'll say script. Close all. Oh, wait a minute. Does it have to have a full path? No, it shouldn't. All right, there's that. What happens if we run it? Ah, identifier can't go after this ID. That is not super helpful. Is it a semicolon? Is that what's going on? Don't tell me it was a semicolon. It's probably a semicolon. All right. We're try it one more time. Yeah, get page archive out of here. Get that out of here. Where's our? All right, now three, two, one. Oh, bummer. All right, what else is it doing? Identifier can't go after this ID or identifier can't. So is that? Line 12 character, is that what that is? Line 12. Oh, uh, look at that. No, wait, that's how I spelled it everywhere. I'm gonna spell it everywhere. Uh, okay, let's just run it with less stuff and see what happens. Because this isn't gonna do anything. This is just gonna build the indexes. Let's see if we can zero in on the error here. It is higher than that. I don't think. Yeah, it doesn't do that. Oh, can you do? Does this work? Uh, I wonder if it doesn't like constant. Also, I don't think it auto saves. What the hell? Okay, everything's commented out. A slash can't go there, okay. I'm gonna do this the hard way. This is, what? Const Safari, how about this? What if we do that? You like that? An identifier can't go after this identifier. Var? I don't understand. Well, at least the line number has changed. Or the character number. What the hell? Oh my god. I know what's going on. This is JavaScript. Not Apple Script. Let's see if we can undo back to the beginning of time. Because when you run JavaScript, you got to pass a different command to OSA script.
uh, pi, no, um, OSA script. JS, JavaScript. L, JavaScript. Do, do, do. Ignore that that just happened. OSA script. Language, I think, I guess, JavaScript. All right. Third time's the charm. It's thinking. Now I'm nervous. Why is it thinking so long? This ends, happens at the end, so I didn't change anything. It happens up front. It was working. <sighs> all right, get rid of that. Close all Safari tabs. We're gonna just comment that out. Oh, I did delete that make URL list. Whoa, I don't know what that is. Self URL list equals nothing, but that's the only place that exists, so that's not it. All right, try it again. Let's spit it out. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Nope. Also, I'm going to save that off real quick because I actually want to keep those. Save as. Uh, But why? So that code hadn't been called yet. If I just put it in, it still runs. Oh, maybe it had been called yet. And it was just, oh, it was just chewing. Okay. Closing tabs. All right, take eight. Closing tabs. Okay, so we're in the closing tabs. Okay, so it's looping through the windows right now and looping through the tabs, counting them. I thought that would have happened faster. Oh, you can see it, there's closing tabs. It's taking a very long time. I feel like something's wrong. I feel like I'm in an infinite loop. So we reversed them. We're starting at the bottom. We're going up. That's got to be an infant loop. Uh, script editor, so we can see what's going on. New JavaScript. Paste. Getting all the loops, or doing our loops, pushing stuff in, we're reversing it. We're starting at the bottom. Going up. I don't want to cut those lines, okay. 
What happens if we run it here? Attempting to assign to a read-only property. Oh! Okay. Var. Now! <laughs> Please work. Ready. Wait. Set. Do it. Closing tabs. Did I save that? I might not have saved that. Okay. We're going to get there. I can feel it. We're close. I'm just going to run it here and see what happens. Ready? Run. Attempting to decide to read only property. I just fixed that. Oh. Wait. Now run. Can't find very tab locations. Oh, okay. So I did something stupid. Um, tab locations. We're just going to do this by hand. Tab locations index, tab locations index. Whoops. That wasn't helpful. Oh. Tab locations that length, tab locations index, Safari, tab locations, tab locations index, tabs. This is nasty. Tab locations. Tab locations index. One, close. I could try it in the script editor, but I really want it to work from the... from this thing. Paste. Save. Run. Nope. Okay, we're just gonna do it in the script editor. Man, I really wanted it to get there. Okay, let's see what I missed. Oh, there they go. Wait a minute, why didn't it work from here? I just not give it enough time? No, something else is up. And it's not returning though, which is weird. Like, why isn't it airing out? Crap, come on. That shouldn't matter. Apple script, JavaScript, command line. I just want to make sure it really is pass L or dash L that you mean. Yep. I means interactive mode, L, and JavaScript. What was JavaScript? You don't want that. So we're here. We literally copied and pasted. Uh, okay, let's try running it from the command line again. Dash L JavaScript. Oops, I should look at tabs to see if it's going. Is 
So there's that, there's that, there's that. So we can see some tabs, see if they close. Yep, they're closing. <sighs> Why didn't it work? From there. What if we do the full path to it? I would be angry if that's it. Still not doing it. That does not make any sense to me. OSA script, L. I did put an L in there, right? That is an L in that funky font, yep. JavaScript. Oh, what if we just call, no, that's not gonna be it either. Closing tabs, except we're not. What's going on? Because this is working. But this aren't. Do you have to put this in the same thing? Seems like that would be weird. Okay, at least finished. Wait, are we still calling it? Yeah, we are. Uh, print return value. Here, I need to get rid of those, because I can't. Those are fighting me. No such component, JavaScript. See, it doesn't return is the problem, so I can't catch whatever's going on with it. What if we give it a bad file? Does it at least give us something? Okay, why is it hanging on JavaScript? <sighs> e, let's evaluate. Yeah, we don't want to do that. We're in debugger. No. I mean, it's interactive mood, but I can't imagine that's what we want. No such component. Maybe we do want interactive mode. S E R I P T script. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Did I not have a comma there this whole time? Oh, if that's it. Uh, 
That's it. Oh, I was missing a comma. Oh, nice. Oops, hang on, my mouse is, uh, everything on my computer is very slow right now because it's firing off all those JavaScript calls to close all the Safari tabs. Hey, I think I got it. Closing tabs, process finished. I was missing a comma that whole time. Uh, so I got it to work, but it won't show up on the href on the body. It was weird. Yeah. <laughs> Normally it's semicolons that get me. That was a comma. Oh, yeah. That's cool. That's very cool. See, you should stream putting together a, uh, Putting together your titles, man. Your um, which of things? Extensions. Uh, which one brings them all back in? There we go. Man, oh. that that took some time. Uh, yeah, I think. How long have I been on? Yeah, three and a half hours. Yeah. I think I'm about to take a break. Uh, I'll be back on later tonight, probably 7, 7.30ish. It's four o'clock now? Yeah. Uh, I just need to go stare at something that's not a screen for a little while. Um, build a browser sweep tool that archives. So we got it. We got this. We're, we're archiving. Uh, need to do the one that reloads them. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna work on that tonight or not. I've got another project that I'm working on where I'm trying to mess with some YouTube stuff to get some synchronization things happening um, that I've want to make progress on um and this ffm tag thing i may do so i think i'm gonna do i'll probably do the ffm peg thing first for a little while because i want to try and get uh i've got a bunch of open source videos so i need i'm experimenting with videos but you got to be careful with youtube because you can't have like i don't want to get copyright bit when i'm working on it uh on stream so i've got a bunch and so i went of course crazy I've got a bunch of open source videos and a bunch of open source audio, and I want to like randomly put them together, which it would be way easier to just upload some stuff and it would be fine. But like, I want to see if I can do this. So that's, I'm going to do one of those things. I'm not sure yet, uh, a little bit later. Um, but till then, have a good one. We'll see you. Uh, keep going on your, uh, on your extension. And uh, I look forward to seeing the progress there. Cool. See you later.